Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. I'm dealing with the California sun here. Bear with me. Today is April 28th, 2017. The weigh-in took place earlier today for tomorrow's big heavyweight mega fight between Anthony Joshua and Vladimir Klitschko. And I thought the weigh-in was very revealing, right? Klitschko comes in light, and it's lighter than you think, right? Klitschko hasn't weighed in this light for a fight since his 2009 fight against Rishlin Chigayev. Let me go one step further. Look at the actual film of the weigh-in. I've placed it here online in my favorites folder. You're going to notice that Vladimir Klitschko is wearing pants, right? That's important. He's wearing pants, and he weighs in the lightest he's weighed since 2009. Also, if you look at the pants, you're going to see that the pants have pockets. Now, that's important because there have been some fighters. Roy Jones, for example, who, according to legend, had coins in his pockets. So he would weigh heavier than he actually was before his fight for the heavyweight title against John Ruiz. Right? I get the feeling Klitschko is coming in light by design. This tells you, in my opinion, that Klitschko is going to be moving. Right? He's not here for a brawl. He plans to be moving. He plans to take this a few rounds. Now, by contrast, Anthony Joshua comes in a little bit heavy. By the way, Joshua is wearing shorts, unlike Klitschko's sweatpants. Right? Joshua is wearing less than Klitschko on the stand, right? On the scale but yet he weighs 10 pounds more than Vladimir Klitschko. This whole fight to me comes down to the first four rounds of the fight, right? I don't believe Joshua is here to win a decision. The over-under is eight and a half, right? One way to hedge this while giving yourself an opportunity to win both sides of the bet if lightning strikes is to take the under eight and a half rounds if you believe in Anthony Joshua, right? Because I don't believe Joshua plans to be around for round nine or 10 or whatever, right? And eight and a half gives you to the midway point of the ninth round. I believe Joshua's game plan is to try to come and is to try to win by KO. So if you're interested in Joshua, but you want decent odds, especially since Joshua now is a minus 250 and higher in some books. I would consider the minus eight and a half. Now, let me point out that I personally believe Vladimir Klitschko wins this fight. I believe Joshua is completely out of his league here, right? With Vladimir Klitschko right now, and it's the day before the fight, you're getting a plus 200 on Vladimir Klitschko. Understand, I personally feel that Klitschko wins the fight by KO. So the under eight and a half round hedge would actually allow you to win both sides of the bet if Vladimir Klitschko closes the show in less than the halfway point of the ninth round. Understand, though, you're getting a plus 200 with Klitschko simply to win. So if Vladimir Klitschko is able to close the show at any time in this fight, even in the later part of the fight, you would win on the plus 200 side of the play, right? So if you're structuring the bet and you want to reduce some risk, and if you believe like me that Anthony Joshua, a fighter who has never made it to the ninth round of a fight, right? Keep in mind. The over-under is priced in a way where the over-under point is higher than Anthony Joshua has ever gone in a fight. And if you're concerned that Anthony Joshua's last opponent was Eric Molina, who doesn't exactly qualify as a Tyson Fury, the unbeaten fighter who Vladimir Klitschko last fought. In other words, if you feel the quality of the opposition these two men have faced are vastly different, right? Then 
one play you might want to do, just looking at the weigh-in, looking at how Klitschko's lighter than he normally is, right? He's lighter than he was for the Tyson Fury fight. By the way, he looks in tremendous shape. Right? One possibility that you might want to consider is the under eight and a half rounds hedged with Klitschko to win. This way, if Joshua, the favorite, gets an early KO, you hit on the under. You're hedged. Right? But if Vladimir Klitschko does what I believe he's going to do, there's a good chance, in my opinion, that you win both sides of the play, right? I don't expect this fight to go to a decision. Of course, if you have Klitschko simply to win the fight as part of your hedge, then if it goes the distance, you have a really good shot of winning on that hedge because keep in mind, only Vladimir Klitschko has ever fought in the championship rounds. Right? And, of course, in terms of the tools these men have, Vladimir Klitschko has not only the superior experience, but he has, in my opinion, the much better jab. That's how I see it. The weigh-in is a must-watch. Just look at Klitschko's pants. Right. Also, look at how Klitschko shows up to the weigh-in. He shows up fully clothed, you know, not wearing a robe. He shows up fully clothed. I, I get the feeling that Klitschko was trying to undersell and hide the fact as much as he could that he's slender, that he's slimmed down for this fight, right? He's fought at 241 before and stuff like that. This is 240 and a quarter, weighed in wearing sweatpants with pockets, Right? Klitschko might actually be even lighter than that. Expect him to come out. Expect him to be the one with the lateral movement. Operating behind the jab, forcing Joshua to come try to find him. Let me also say this too. I know people are looking at the fact that Klitschko's 41. And I know David Hay has come out and has said Klitschko is done. Right? He's finished. David Hay is one of those picking Anthony Joshua to win the fight. Understand, you don't rely on reflexes as much if you're the lead puncher and not the counter puncher. The counter puncher, you're waiting for the opening before you throw it. If you're the lead puncher, if you're leading with jabs, your goal might be to have the jabs create the opening for you. Right? If you're acting and not reacting, then even if, and I don't buy this, but even if Klitschko's reflexes have slowed marginally, right, it wouldn't be as big an issue if he's the one leading. And I'm just telling you, he's not fighting Tyson Fury here. You saw the height gap here. right? Klitschko's not looking up at this weigh-in like he was in the Tyson Fury weigh-in. You notice he's taller than Anthony Joshua, right? So I believe Klitschko is going to be the lead here. And I think people are going to be surprised. He's going to be faster than he normally is, certainly faster than he was his last fight because he weighs less and he's fighting a different kind of fighter. Anyway, those are my post-weigh-in thoughts. Let me hear from you. If there's anything anyone here spotted at the weigh-in that you feel we need to think about and be ready for. I hope you leave those comments in the comment section to this video. Let me also point out too, right? Amir Khan felt that Joshua looked nervous, right? Understand Klitschko looks as calm as I've seen him. Klitschko claims he's been liberated by no longer having the expectations of being a champion. Right, of dealing with Joe Lewis's defense record. Right? Klitschko feels that, you know, now he's just a guy able to pursue his craft without the burden of being champion. Right? Is it possible that the location of this fight in Anthony Joshua's country, with the country 
firmly behind Joshua as Lennox Lewis claims, right? Lennox Lewis in an interview, and it's on BoxingScene.com, claimed that the country's more behind Anthony Joshua than they were behind Lennox Lewis when, his, when he fought. Is that a good thing? If you're a young, unproven champion who's never fought in the championship rounds, has never had a professional boxing match go the distance, is it a good thing to have this kind of social pressure? Let's just say I've seen fighters fall apart with less pressure than 80-odd thousand people there you know, hoping that he somehow brings home the equivalent of the professional gold, right? Let's face it. I know this is supposed to be his third defense of his title. This is really his first title match, isn't it, right? Because Joshua won the title from Charles Martin, who, you know, I'm sure most of us would expect to see him on the side of a milk carton, right? Charles Martin wasn't a guy who the person in the street would be able to pick out of a lineup as the heavyweight champion, right? So here you have Joshua after fighting. Dominique Brazil, Eric Molina, right? Now he's in with a guy who most of the public considers to have been a legitimate heavyweight champion, right? This is a guy who didn't lose for 10 years. This is a guy who qualifies for the adjective long time in terms of his heavyweight reign, right? You think of all the champions out there, you say, wow, who has more experience than Deontay Wilder or, you know, Anthony Joshua in heavyweight championship matches, and it's this opponent. And this opponent is in shape, right? I believe if any fighter is going to hyperventilate if any fighter is going to be overcome by the moment, overcome by the expectations, overcome by the crowd, it might be the hometown fighter. I'm just telling you, there's a whole group of fighters. Look up Azuma Nelson's career, who actually preferred fighting on the road to fighting at home. Because on the road, you weren't dealing with, you know, Uncle Joe, Uncle Bob, Auntie Phyllis, expecting tickets. Right? On the road, your training cab was just about training. It wasn't about placating the local press, maintaining the local relationships you have with the media. Right? So Anthony Joshua hasn't been on this big a stage. Right? And he's coming in heavy, folks. Anthony Joshua in the 250s? Would you want to be the heaviest you fought against Vladimir Klitschko? who weighed in at 240 and a quarter wearing sweatpants with pockets. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let's enjoy the fight. I hope you leave your comments in this video and win, lose, or draw. And understand, there's a lot of people out there picking Joshua. He's the favorite. Win, lose, or draw. We'll do a post-fight video. Um, I suspect, well, put it this way. I believe by the start of the third round, by the start of the third round, it's going to be obvious that one of these fighters has the upper hand. Now, I know many of you feel that by the start of the third round, we'll be seeing every year of Vladimir Klitschko's 41 years of age. He's going to look like an old man. He's going to be in there with the young lion who's teeing off, who's this close, this close to ballooning his legacy, right? This close to the signature accomplishment on a short career. Just understand that by the start of the third round, there's another scenario that might play out. Where Anthony Joshua's head has been snapped back, where his neck is sore, where he hasn't come close to cornering or getting inside on an older champion, right, who's just uncrowned for the moment because he lost his title in his last fight. Anyway, let's see what happens. I'm expecting Klitschko to win big here. Let's see what happens, just to understand. Fighters in the game with experience against Vladimir Klitschko, notably David Hay, is picking Anthony Joshua, right? Hay's trainer, 
for that fight, Adam Booth is picking Anthony Joshua, right? Freddie Roach, friend of Vladimir Klitschko, is picking Anthony Joshua, right? Um, we'll see what happens. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.